Welcome to Spotlight, I'm Vivian Flora. Joining me today is Director of the School of Communication at the University of Central Arkansas, Dr. Donna Lampkin-Stevens. Welcome, Donna. Thanks, Vivian. It's good to be here. It's good to, ha uh, it's good to have you. It's good to be in this spot. Yes. So how are you today? I'm good. So tell me, what does it mean to be the Director of the School of Communication? Well, um, I'm a director because our department is, is, is a big, is big. <laughs> and complicated and so we have um, six different programs and a lot of faculty and so we are a school instead of a department and so I'm the director instead of a chair so that's what that means so what are all the different um, parts of the school of communication so the school of communication is um, includes degree programs in communication journalism public relations, and writing, which is soon to be writing, rhetoric, and information design. We, we're going to have a name change there for the major. And we also have the first year writing program and the principles of communication program, which are um, lower division core courses that, that almost every student at ECA has to take. So we're, we're a complicated being and uh, lots of moving parts, but it's a, it's a good place. And how long have you been in the department? Uh, well, I have, uh, this is my 23rd year at UCA, I'm finishing up, and um, I, I became the interim director in 2018, and I was, um, <laughs> and on March the 6th of 2020, I interviewed for the permanent director position, and then when COVID hit, and we all went home. <laughs> so, uh, so it's been a, it's been an interesting four years now, so. And what was the um, what was the school like when you first arrived twenty three years ago? Well, the the history, um, you know, we were three different departments. Uh, I'm not even sure if if you realize this because the students change so often, you know. So um, yeah. so for many years, we uh, journalism was in the department of mass communication and theater, and along with film and theater, <clears throat> and then uh, there was a department of communication and public relations and a department of writing, which included uh, uh, professional technical writing, as well as creative writing, as well as first year writing. So in 2016, there was a reorganization and we, uh, we essentially switched places with creative writing. And so the journalism went over, uh, journalism went into the uh, School of Communication, creative writing went to make the department of film, theater, and creative writing. And so the, the idea behind that was that we would put the, the creators together and the communicators together because, and it makes some sense, you know, so, so we have, um, we've spent, um, gosh, I guess we're finishing our, what, sixth year uh, as a school of communication. And so we have, we have come together and it's, it's been um, interesting, uh, but, but I think we've seen a lot of uh, great opportunities for, um, collaboration and and working together we we do all of what we do in the school of Commu communication is we do stuff i mean we do journalism we do public relations we have we have cl uh, nonprofit clients for uh, writing we we do capstones in, in communication so so it's 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 a good fit i think and and it's good because we you know we've shored ourselves up because you know uh, in with these coming days of difficult budgets, uh, we're, we're a good strong department uh, or school and so that's going to help us you know, overcome some of these difficulties ahead. So what have you noticed uh, since like this big kind of coming together, you think that things um, flow better well? Flow well? Um, it took a while because many of us didn't know each other. You know, I mean, we were over here in, in journalism, we were over here in Stanley Russ Hall, and the other departments were over in Thompson Hall, and, you know, we sort of knew each other through committee work and things like that, but I'd say for, oh, I'd say we're still getting to know each other. I mean, we have about 35 faculty, um, you know, a lot of departments have 10 or 12, and we have, you know, three times that, and, and, um, and what we do is similar, but it's different as well. You know, so um, so we're I think we're learning from each other, and we're we're learning um, about each other. We're finding uh, interesting ways that interesting ideas that we can that we can collaborate on. You know, uh, uh, team taught classes perhaps, or or guest lectures in, in in other people's classes and that kind of thing. So it's uh, you know we're we're building a community, and I think. Um, 
I don't know that that's ever done, you know, but it's, but it's, we're getting a, a long way toward there, so. And in your 23 years of being at UCA, what have you noticed about students um, and their changing? Uh, that's, in, that's an interesting question. Um, students, I mean, I have loved, I have loved every, every class that I've ever had at UCA. <laughs> um, I taught in public school for uh, seven years. I taught seventh grade English and, you know, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, and, you know, journalism, and I much prefer the college age. <laughs> but, um, you know, I teach mainly advanced reporting, and um, I'm telling you, the last several semesters, my students have gotten better and better, and I'm, I'm really excited about what we're turning out at UCA. So, is there any moment throughout your history of teaching where you're like, okay, wow, this is why I do it? Um, every semester in, in the advanced reporting, uh, we go down uh, to city, Conway City Council a couple of times and Faulkner County Quorum Court, and um, we've been to federal court when, you know, we, in the bad old days, we had a few, um, um, shall I say, crooks that you see. <laughs> who wound up at, in federal court or, or district court or circuit court. And so, and so we were there in the courtroom when some of them were sentenced. And so that was really exciting. Um, um, the Gilbert Baker situation that is ongoing, uh, he was indicted the first day of advanced reporting a couple of years ago. I don't remember the exact year. But he was indicted that day after I'd taught uh, advanced reporting for the first time uh, that semester. And um, my class was all over that. Uh, Lauren McLemore uh, reached out to, to uh, Professor Baker and he, he gave her an exclusive interview that ran on the front page of the Echo. Uh, we went to, to federal court to his arraignment and he, he looked her in the eye and said, you know, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna let Lauren McLemore from the Echo ask the first question. And KETV was there and the Democrat Gazette was there. So that was, that was really a sort of a, I mean, it's a, it's a sad situation, but it was a great, great experience for UCA journalism. Yeah, what, um, what prompted you to start taking students to the Quorum Court and City Council and stuff like that? <laughs> well, I, um, I went to the University of Arkansas in, in the 1980s and, and uh, while we didn't do uh, city council in Quorum Court, we covered the election of 1984. <laughs> and in 1984, my assignment was Madison County, uh, Huntsville, and they were still using paper ballots. <laughs> so we were there a long time, and it was and, and that night, you know, or early morning when we were heading back to campus, I thought, man, this is exciting, this is fun, and so. Um, you know, my predecessor here uh, was Ernie Dumas, with whom I had worked at the old Arkansas Gazette, and that's what he had done. I mean, he had he had taken that had was his tradition, and when I took his job, he said, you know, this is something you ought to continue, and and so I I have, and I've I've loved it. I've learned a lot about Conway and Faulkner County. I mean, I hadn't lived here that long when I took this job, and um, students love to do, and students love to hear stories about those who have by those who have done. And so um, I think it's, I tell my students every semester, they're, I'm gonna work your tail off, but at the end of the semester, you're gonna thank me for it. And I think you would say that that was true, wasn't it? Absolutely, <laughs> I fully agree. It was a really challenging semester, but I still use today everything that I learned. What, so what, what kinds of things did you learn? Um, we talked a lot about, and this was, spring of 2020, right? Yes. So it was, it was so, an, the interrupted semester. Yes, yes. We, we started off pretty okay and then immediately everything was different yeah. and it was extra challenging, but um, paying attention, and this might seem really simple, but paying attention in those meetings, mm -hmm. um, really actively listening, um, it can take you a lot farther than you might assume it would. Mm -hmm. You know, you can always like read a transcript or, you know, ask somebody who was there. But when you get that firsthand experience, mm -hmm. you have the ability to write a much better story. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So really being present was a big part of that class. Um, and a big challenge just because everything was online and it was Zoom and it was, uh, it was really hard to be present. We weren't mm -hmm. allowed to be present, but yep. we really, we yep. fought um, to be there, I think. And 
So that's what I took away from yeah. the class, and yeah. I still um, use those, you know, experiences today good, good. in my interviewing. Um, I hope so. Yeah. Um, so, what? How did you get started in journalism? So. Um, I always like to write, mm -hmm. and um, I was the editor of my little high school paper at Camden Fairview, and I went to the University of Arkansas and wanted to be a journalism major. And I, I found then that it was a little, uh, that was a big school, you know, I was from a small pl place, and I, I found that it was a little overwhelming, um, not necessarily so welcoming by, by upperclassmen. And, and um, that's one thing that I'm very proud of at UCA. We, we've, we, get, we meet freshmen when they get here, don't we? And, and so they, we want to get them involved. And then once you get them involved, they're involved forever. So, um, so I became an English and a journalism double major and uh, graduated and, well, actually, I uh, got an internship at the old Arkansas Gazette as a sports writer um, in 19, summer of 1984. <clears throat> and... Um, Loved it. I thought I found my place. I, fa I found this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. So I went back and f finished my degree and went back to the Gazette full time in 1985. <clears throat> and I um, started out working three to midnight, um, Wednesday through what? Sunday. <laughs> and uh, I took scores over the phone. I was the agate clerk, I, you know, I, and I just loved it. And, and the, you know, every job we, we were talking a while ago about your. You know, you have to start somewhere. You have to start low, and you have to to to, uh, to work your way up. And then I got to cover some golf, and I got to cover some high school football. And I thought, man, this is it. And so, and so I um, um, first time I came to the well, not 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 the first time, but uh, but I began to cover UCA when I was at the Gazette when I covered the old Arkansas Intercollegiate Conference, and I covered Arkansas Tech and Southern Arkansas and all of those. And then I went to um, Fayetteville, I was on the Fayetteville Bureau for the Gazette Sports Department. I was the first female reporter allowed in the Razorback locker room in, <laughs> in 1991. <laughs> wow. Uh, a couple of, apparently a couple of uh, female uh, television reporters had sneaked in um, previously and Lou Holtz had them thrown out. <laughs> but when Arkansas went to the Southeastern Conference, the SEC had an equal access policy and so either everyone went in or no one went in. And so when the, when the male reporters went into the locker room, I, I went in too because otherwise I'm having to stand outside and that's, that's not cool. So, so I did that and loved the Arkansas Gazette, would have been there forever, and then the Gazette closed in the, in the fall of 1991. And so I was uh, taking a, a graduate class at the time and um, went on and finished my master's degree and taught in um, public school for seven years until I literally um, ran into Ernie Dumas on the UCA campus. I was doing a, a freelance story and um, he, he said, Donna Lampkin, you have an, a master's degree, don't you? And I said, yes. And he said, you've got to take my job. I'm trying to retire and I, they can't find anybody to take my place. And I said, oh, I can't do that. And when I got home, uh, the phone was ringing, and it was it was the chair of the Department of Mass Communication and Theater, B Dr. Bob Willenbrink, and he said, "Come over here for an interview." And uh, and um, so I came over for an interview, and he, we want to hire you, and we're going to offer you twenty eight thousand dollars. And I said, "I'm making twenty, I'm making thirty thousand dollars at Mayflower High School. I'm not coming for less than that." <laughs> and so, and so, one thing led to another, and here I am, <laughs> twenty three years later. So you mentioned a little bit about um, being the first woman allowed into the locker room. Um, how has your experience been being a woman in journalism? How have you seen that evolution? It's, um, I, was, I think I was the fourth sports, female sports writer at the Arkansas Gazette. Um, Brenda Sisson, maybe I was the third. Brenda Sisson was the first. She went on to a long career in PR in, in Little Rock. And... Um, um, Nancy Clark was there when I got there. She she went on after the Gazette closed to Des Moines, Iowa, and I think I was must have been the third. Um, I found that it, it, lots of people were not used to dealing with women in sports, you know. And I and I was um, I was by and large 
treated very, very well. There were, you know, I had a few little, those little instances of, uh, you know, I mean, harassment, you know, and so you, you handle those along the way. And, um, uh, but I think that I, I took my job seriously and I know that, um, I think that that came across and I think people respected me and, and, uh, and I built a rep, and I mean, I built a reputation and for, since the Gazette closed, so that's what, 31 years, I've, I've done a lot of freelance writing. So I've done, I mean, I'm still doing it even though I'm not working, you know, full time for a newspaper, so. So you've mentioned how much writing you've done and how much you love writing. What inspires you as a writer? Um, I love telling stories. Uh, ev everybody has a story and it, it, it just takes a good reporter to get, to get that story out. Um, y you know, um, one year I was at the Gazette and uh, Coach Nolan Richardson, the Arkansas basketball coach, you know, his daughter uh, was diagnosed with leukemia shortly after he came to Arkansas. I think it was about, I think it was after he got there. And she died at like 12 years old. And so um, I was there on a Sunday night and the sports editor, Orville Henry, called up and said, you know, things are bad and Yvonne is in the hospital and you need to call and see, get, a, get, a, get an update on that. <clears throat> so I called the number thinking it was going to be the nurse's station and it was Mrs. Richardson who answered the phone. And so I found quickly, you know, you have to uh, just, uh, she was so gracious to me and she thanked me for, for our interest and um, uh, you, you have to be a compassionate listener. You have to, um, you have to get people, you, you want to get people to, to, to trust you and to, um, and to allow you to tell their story. Uh, after Yvonne died, a, a, a few years later, I, I did a, a feature story on, on the Richardsons, and I, I remember the lead. It was still um, a Christmas tree went up for the, uh, in the Richardson household for the first time in five years uh, last, last month. It was a sign of the healing that has happened uh, uh, in the family since Yvonne died, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, you, and, I, and I think I did a nice job on that, you know. Um, um, there were some... Um, there was a football player at, at Arkansas, a freshman football player from Little Rock who um, shot himself on purpose. Um, girlfriend had broken up with him and he, you know, a, a young dumb kid who, who couldn't see beyond. So I, uh, I was sent to the hospital. They, they kept him on life support until his uh, mother arrived that night to, then they were gonna harvest his organs. And so I was, um, my assignment was to go um, was was to try to talk to the mother. That's a, that's a tough one, and so I I went to the um, hospital and remember at that time there was a, a newspaper war going on with the Arkansas Democrat and the Arkansas Gazette, and so I was there for the Gazette, and I went to the um, I was going to the hospital. And, you know I didn't I didn't want to you don't want to you don't want to bother those people in that situation, and so. Um, I, I saw Coach Jack Crow, who was the football coach the, at the time, in the parking lot, and I just said, uh, tell, I can't even remember her name, tell Mrs. So-and-so that if she wants to talk, I'll be out in the waiting room. And so he did, and I, I stuck around in the waiting room until after the deadline, uh, and she didn't come out, and that was fine. I, I mean, I didn't force, force, force her to talk to me, but, but I found that you'll be surprised that a lot of times people want to talk. Maybe not in that situation with uh, such, a, such an unexpected loss, but um, many, many people who have undergone um, disasters or, or, or tragedies seem to seek out, they, they want people to listen to their story, and I think we owe them that. I, th I think that's an important responsibility that we have. Absolutely, I, I, I totally agree. Um, how do you get somebody to trust, a total stranger to trust you? You have to be open, um, professional, um, uh, interested in, in them, you know. Um, I remember when I was working at the Gazette and, um, you know, I covered like the 10 schools in the AIC, so I did a lot of phone work, you know. And someone, I think it was, I can't remember who it was, maybe it was Jim Bailey, the great sports writer of, of the Arkansas Gazette, 
I hung up the phone. I'd talked to somebody on the phone, and he said, you know what? You have a gift. He said, you make everybody you talk to think that they're the most important person in the, in the room. And I thought, you know what? That's a compliment because I get people, in a, and I th he said, everybody that you talk to will think that they're your favorite team. <laughs> So, you know, you have to be uh, objective, but, but, but I want them all to think that, that they're my favorite team, you know, so um, um, just because they, they allow you to, to tell their stories, and I think that's important. So we're going to pivot a little bit yeah. and talk back to uh, UCA. So Yeah, I've been talking too much about myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, I've loved it. I've loved it. Um, how do you think your experiences have shaped the students here at UCA? I think uh, particularly with the journalism faculty, and I'm going to say this because I've, I'm one of them and I've been here longer with journalism than, than the whole school, but I, I think the journalism faculty today have, uh, we counted up at one time, almost a 200 years of combined professional experience. I mean, we have done it. We, we know people. We are able to, to uh, place uh, students in internships and you know, we're able to recommend for jobs and things like that. Um, I, th I think that's a real asset of the journalism faculty in that Dr. Walter has done magazine writing. She's done photography. You know, D Dr. Keith was a member, uh, was, was the editor of the uh, Log Cabin Democrat for a long time and worked as a reporter in Jonesboro. Uh, Professor Moritz has been around, um, he worked with me at the old Arkansas Gazette, he was at the Chattanooga paper, uh, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Uh, Professor Weiser has done radio and television. I mean, Professor Brooks has been, at, was at ETN forever. So I think that we have established here a real, um, you know, a partnership between faculty and students. I think the students feel that way. I mean, I think that, don't oh, you think? Yeah, that, uh, absolutely. It's, it, you don't, we're not some, some, some lecturer from on high talking about something that we've never done. Y you know, I think there's a real difference between people who, have you had teachers who, who are teaching about things that they've just read about? Oh, absolutely. Can you tell a difference? Yes, and I think that's one of the most valuable things that I've gotten out of this um, is that I really trust the faculty, like I, I trust you guys that, you know, I'm going to need references, I'm going to need a job, and um, already I've seen that kind of come to life for a lot of uh, students that have come before me, and I'll say listening to uh, Dr. Brooks's stories about when he was in production and mm -hmm. broadcast, it is so much fun. Mm -hmm. His stories make you feel like you can do it too. Yeah, yeah. And that you have the backing of the people. I mean, I'll tell you, my, my mentor was Roy Reed. He, was, um, he, he worked at the Arkansas Gazette. He worked at the New York Times. And he came to the University of Arkansas and re when he retired from, from journalism and taught. And he was my number one mentor. He was on my reference list <laughs> until the day he died. And, you know, I, I, could, I knew I could call him at any time and, and ask about a particular question or a situation and I hope that y'all feel the same way about, not just in journalism, but in the whole school of communication. And I'll tell you, one of the honors of my life was when Roy Reed died unexpectedly and his family asked me to speak at his funeral. I mean, that, I mean, I loved him and he, he, he changed my life. And I hope that we're doing the same thing with all of, you, of the, with all of you. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's how I learned. I don't know of, of another, of a better way to have a, a, a mentor-mentee relationship than with the, with the college faculty member who, who works with you side by side, who goes to the city council meetings with you. You know, they're not just sending you out there. You know, you, you, know, you go with them and sit there. Uh, I think that's very important. I think it is too, and I think you guys do it really well. Because a you. lot of the stuff that we're doing, like going to city council meetings or, you know, filming on our own, doing this kind of reporting, it can be very intimidating for somebody who's never done it before. Yeah, yes. So to have somebody right there next to you that is going to help you through it, it's definitely uh, transformative. And, and then it, you gain confidence. Yeah, you can get, you yeah. get all the confidence to be able to go out and do it on your own. And help your peers. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely um, a community. I think we're doing it right here. I, I, t I fully agree, yeah. yeah. So where do you see the School of Communication going in the next five years? Well, um, we, you know, we've been through COVID. Uh, we're having, uh, you know, university-wide, nationwide, we're having to do more with less. So um, 
you know, I, I'm, I, I'm afraid that, you know, enrollments, you know, we've got to keep recruiting because, um, because uh, the birth rate, I mean, we're going to hit a, a birth, birth rate dip. That there's not going to be as many 18 year olds as, as we're used to. So we've got to hang on to them. We've got to get as many as we can. Um, uh, recruiting will be a, a big, big push. If we can get them to campus, I can sell them when they get here because I can bring them in here and look around. And I think I may have done that with you. When you <laughs> so, uh, so if we can get them to campus to, to meet with the faculty, to meet with the faculty in writing and communication and public relations and talk about all those great projects that, uh, that, that we are doing that are making a difference in the world. I mean, the Writing for Change course partners with nonprofits. They partnered with a, a, a dog rescue that I've worked with in the past, and they were able to, to put together grant proposals for, for that rescue to be able to, to work on. Um, you, you know, I just, if they want to work, if they want to be a part of, of, um, of, of what we do here, they will find their place. But I also want to say, they, you're going to get out of it what you put into it. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you can come in and just, just you know, sort of halfway do, do things. Go to class, but not, not get involved in anything, and you're not going to get much out of it. But if you really embrace it like you have, Vivian, uh, you know, you're going to get a lot out of this. And so I think, I wish every student w could understand that from the, from the get-go. Yeah, I think part of that is me, and I'm a very involved person, mm -hmm. but I've seen other people come in, because I'm in the news station four days mm -hmm. a week. Mm -hmm. I'm here all the time. Um, and I've seen a lot of students come in kind of timid mm -hmm. and maybe mm -hmm. like not as willing to join, and just watching them totally transform into somebody that's super involved and like a person that can be relied on. And that's why we as you as upperclassmen need to bring those people along. Unlike what they did at the University of Arkansas, for me, I mean, those people had became my friends later, but they weren't very welcoming, you know, uh, when I was a, an 18-year-old freshman. So, so that I, I think that we have to continue to work on our um, uh, students can sell future students. That's who they that's who they want to talk to. They don't want to talk to me. You know, they want to talk to they want to talk to somebody who's there right now. So, there's one particular person that totally stands out and. She came through and she came by on the tour when we were in, you know, getting set up for the I think news. I know who you're talking about. And yeah, and now she's one of our producers for New Six, and it has just been one of the coolest things. Brie Hansen. Yes, ma'am, Brie Hansen. Brie Hansen was here last spring mm -hmm. as a high school freshman, uh, I'm sorry, high school senior, checking out her where she wanted to go to college, and we sold her. And she's, and she's doing a great job. And <laughs> she is. We're, she's going to be a leader for several years to come. Yeah, she's, she's amazing. And so seeing, being able to be kind of a part of that as a student mm -hmm. has been really awesome. And I do mm -hmm. think, I absolutely agree, we have something really amazing here and, and something that is unique. Mm -hmm. um, well, Dr. Stevens, it has been a pleasure. Gosh, we could have uh, gone talking on to you. <laughs> <laughs> We really probably could have. It has been a pleasure talking to you today about school My communication. My pleasure. Yes. I'm Viviana Flora. Thank you for joining us today on Spotlight.